I'm Kat coming in live from Brooklyn, New York. What's the easiest way to eat more seafood? The easiest way to eat more seafood is just knowing some of the basics in the kitchen um, when cooking with fish. So basic ingredients, basic um, tools and, and tips and tricks that can really just make any species really accessible any day of the week. Um, and also most importantly, make it delicious. The event's gonna be broken up into three different parts. Part one, we're going to do a thawing demo just to show you how easy it is to cook seafood anytime. Um, part two, I'm going to share my fish cooking essentials that make cooking any species really easy and really delicious. Part three, we'll do a little mini cooking demo um, of one of my favorite cooking techniques, with, which some of you are probably familiar with. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with thawing. I'm going to show you the overnight thawing method. I, I would say it's the most hands-off. You do have to plan ahead and remember to do it. So let me grab a frozen filet out of the freezer here. I have a filet of sockeye salmon. So um, when you're thawing overnight, it doesn't have to be overnight. Overnight just means about 10 to 12 hours. Um, just want to take it out of the pack. And then we are going to put it onto a plate just like that. To thaw it, all you're doing is putting it on a low shelf in the fridge. Um, so you're putting it on a low shelf in case there's any spillage, just want to avoid any cross contamination because that ice glaze is going to melt off. Um, once it melts off, it'll just melt off onto the plate here. Um, so use something with a rim, even like a baking sheet would be fine. Um, and then you leave it 10 to 12 hours overnight. It should be ready to cook um, the next day. If you want to do a more convenient method, which I use, it's slightly more hands-on, um, but don't let that uh, deter you. This is my go-to method. What you want to do, you also want to take the fish out of the pack and then have a bowl of cold water ready. Just a bowl of cold water, tap water. And then you want to find a Ziploc baggie or even a silicone bag, something like a reusable bag. You're going to put the frozen filet into a resealable bag. So now that you have it in a resealable bag, you're going to put it in water like this, and you might need to weigh it down. That's why this little plate was here earlier. Um, so that the filet is fully submerged in the water. Um, I like to change out the water every 30 minutes so that it's not getting too hot or too cold even. I'm just going to set this aside, um, but within, you know, about an hour or so, based on the thickness of this, the fish should be ready to cook. If you don't have time to defrost at all, or if you just don't want to defrost anything, we do have some cooking from frozen um, cooking methods. These techniques are really good if you just want to have something now, especially pan frying salmon. Um, it's definitely not as good as quick thawing. However, I absolutely do cook salmon from frozen because sometimes I'm just hungry. And if you have a good sauce to go with it, it does the trick. The reason why it's not ideal is because you cannot totally control the doneness of the outside of the fish versus the inside. Um, there's such a big temperature difference. Um, you do want to try to use a thinner filet so that you have more even cooking, um, but sometimes it can leave the fish a little bit drier than, you know, ideal, um, at least for my preference. Um, but it's totally a great method to have in your back pocket. And if you're pan frying from frozen, you can actually get crispy salmon skin too. So um, it feels like a gourmet meal and literally takes 15 minutes from the freezer to the plate. So part two, we get to talk about some of my essentials, my seafood tool box, perhaps. Cooking any species of fish, whether you're familiar with them or not, can be really just as basic as cooking any other protein. And I have found that a few of these tools make it really, really easy to cook. Number one most important thing is a virtual tool. Uh, we have how-to cooking guides that cover techniques, times, temperatures, all the stuff you need um, to make sure that you're cooking seafood perfectly every time. Um, the next tool, this is a very underestimated tool that has really helped me become a better seafood cook lots of clean kitchen towels or even paper towels. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, reusable kitchen towels like this, but I have a stack 
that I dedicate um, to anything related to seafood, you want to be able to pat fish dry. And this is going to help give you a really nice crisp texture if you're searing, grilling, broiling, um, anytime you're putting some sort of dry rub on things, you'll get a really beautiful crust to form. Um, the next one that I want to share is my trusty fish spatula. So any spatula works, but this makes doing anything with fish so much easier because it's a longer um, shape. Also, this is much more flexible and thinner than um, your average spatula. So that's going to come in super handy when you're searing something or grilling something because you can really get underneath the filet of fish. If you don't have one of these yet, I highly recommend investing in one. They, you know, they don't, you don't have to get an expensive one. Just um, you can find really cheap ones like restaurant supply stores um, online. Um, can't live without it. So next cooking tool is the instant read thermometer. Um, when you're using a thicker fillet of fish, this will help you understand what that level of doneness is like. And it helps you familiarize um, maybe your own palate to what your preference is. If I'm cooking um, a thick fillet, I, I don't use this that much anymore um, because I kind of know what to look for in terms of flakiness and doneness. But if I'm cooking a very, very thick fillet, it totally comes in handy. I don't have to cut into the fish to see if it's done or not. Um, I can just kind of uh, literally take its temperature and um, see if it's ready. So the other tool that I'm gonna use today is parchment paper. So this is something that we can turn into a pouch that's gonna steam the fish. So that's what we're gonna do with this thing later. One more virtual resource that I just wanna reiterate is the member experience team. They're here to answer any of your food questions. Even if you're just looking for recipe inspo, um, they're a really awesome resource for that. All right, so let me share a few of my ingredients. The first ingredient that I absolutely love and use, have pretty much in my fridge all the time is pesto. I love putting this on fish. It adds tons of flavor just instantly. The other uh, ingredient that I really love is a panko breadcrumb. Um, panko breadcrumbs are awesome because they're a little bit coarser, um, so they get extra crunchy. Uh, it's basically, it's instant texture, and that can make a dish feel like much more finished than just searing a filet. You know, don't get me wrong, I love just a plain seared filet of salmon with a little bit of salt. Doesn't need anything else, in my opinion, but when you want to mix it up, you can just add some breadcrumbs somewhere. So the other staple that I have that this is practically empty now, but this is a container of miso. But essentially miso paste is this soybean fermented uh, paste. It's like a texture almost of like peanut butter. And um, this is a really strong salty flavor. It's super savory. It pairs really well with seafood. What we're going to do is make fish and tapioca. We're going to make um, this using Pacific cod. What I'm going to start with is a, a piece of parchment that I know I can fold into a pouch, basically like wrapping a present. Um, I like to start with a layer of vegetables, although vegetables are totally optional. Um, I'm using some of these snap peas today because they are just in season and gorgeous. So that's just the fish on top of a bed of veggies. To this, I'm going to add some pesto. I like to just spoon that pretty generously on top. And this is going to simultaneously baste the fish in some fat. Pacific cod's really lean, so I like that it adds a little bit more of that richness to the dish. Then to this, I wanna add a little bit of liquid, mix a little bit of this miso paste with some water um, and make tasty water. And this is going to go around the fish and turn into this really delicious, savory, uh, steaming, um, steaming liquid. And it'll become a little bit saucy afterward, you'll see. So I always build this on a baking sheet so that I don't lose too much liquid all over the counter. <laughs> all right, we have everything in here now. So what I'm going to do is just make little pleats around the edges of the pouch here. And we're just going to seal this up like that. 
it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, certainly some steam is going to escape, but you want to try to get this to be pretty tightly pleated. So I'm going to put this into the oven. I have the oven preheated right now. Uh, the oven's at like 400. Um, I'm kind of just making up this recipe as we go. But I think with this piece of fish, I'm going to check on it in like eight minutes and we'll see if it's done then. If it's not done, we can let it cook for another two minutes or so and um, should be um, done at that point. So um, what I did there, I made fish and papillote and papillote is just a French cooking technique where things are steamed in a pouch. Um, so I made fish and papillote with peas, pesto, and I don't know, miso tasty water. Um, and that's all that went into that plus a little bit of extra olive oil Right. So what we have here is what I think and hope is a finished meal. I'm just going to check the temperature of this, which might not be super accurate because as you saw earlier, this is a very thin filet. Um, I feel like I could probably cook this for a little bit longer, but just for the sake of time, let's open this up to see. And to know whether this is done, other than checking the internal um, temperature of the fish, you can flake the side of it. And if it flakes pretty easily, then it's ready. This is a little underdone because it didn't flake off perfectly, but this bit I know is cooked. So really, really tasty. Um, it smells incredible. I'm not going to plate this quite yet. I'm just going to let this cook for another minute or so. I'm just gonna pop this back in. We're just gonna let that cook for another minute or two. It's gonna stay nice and moist. All right, let's check the fish. We'll open this back up. I'm going to transfer this whole thing to this bowl and just slide it out of the parchment. Let me show you what this beautiful, beautiful meal looks like now. Uh, a gorgeous springtime vegetable with flaky cod. That is what I'm looking for there. A really nice, easy flake on the side. Um, that is perfectly done. And for the final moment here, if the fish, the fish is so flaky, it's not even staying on my fork right now. That's a good thing. Yummy. This is perfect. Um, I hope this inspires you to cook something for yourself tonight um, or another day this week when you have time. This was so easy to do. Just put everything in a packet and it's going to be delicious afterward. Um, I cooked this, like I said, 400 degrees. It was about 10 minutes for a thin, thin filet of Pacific cod. Next week, if you have an air fryer, join us. We're going to be making air fryer teriyaki salmon and we're going to cook it from frozen. So this is going to be a really fun, really tasty, really fast event um, that hopefully will inspire you to just throw something into an air fryer with some sauce on it. Um, I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. And until then, live wild, everyone.